Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today, one of the main theorems about homotopy groups, the Whitehead theorem. Um, and it turns out that Whitehead theorem is one of the cornerstones, as I said, of homotopy theory. And it kind of wants to tell you how strong homotopy groups are. We will get there. So the statement is basically that for nice spaces, uh, homotopy groups form a complete invariant which is not quite true, we'll see, and I'm, I'm going to explain where the little catches are along the way. Um, what is a nice space? Well, certainly by now, I hope you agree that cell complexes are nice spaces. It turns out that the paper where Whitehead proved the Whitehead's theorem uh, was also the paper where cell complexes were introduced. So in some sense, they were introduced in order to make the statement true, uh, but they're still, of course, very useful. And the statement is also still very, very cute. Um, so here's the uh, setup. So we are interested in homotopy equivalent spaces or to detect homotopy equivalents. Uh, we are uh, interested in to de detect homeomorphisms. So kind of this little blue uh, box in the middle here uh, or the corresponding white box. And this is kind of a Venn diagram like thing. So um, spaces that are homotopy equivalent might not be uh, homeomorphic, of course not. So the white box is a little bit smaller um, than the blue box. And the only invariants we really know are uh, homology and homotopy. There are many more, of course, but let's focus on homology and homotopy. And both will have a kind of a white hat theorem. So we'll see. And this is really the setup. So you can have spaces with isomorphic homotopy groups. This is my red bubble. You can have spaces with isomorphic homology. That's my green bubble. Uh, you can have any type of overlap. Um, and isomorphic homology might or might not tell you whether um, spaces are homotopy equivalent and whatnot, right? So you can kind of have everything. So for each part here in this little uh, Venn diagram, so this one here or here or in the middle or wherever, right? So for each part here, um, you would find a space which is in there, but not in something else. So it really is uh, kind of a strict Venn diagram in that sense. So certainly um, the question that arises is that homotopy, in, uh, for example, homotopy or homology uh, induces, I, uh, so homotopy equivalence induces isomorphisms in homology or uh, homotopy. Of course, that's kind of the whole point, but um, to what extent is actually the converse true? And this is where the celebrated white hat theorem comes into the game. So as well as trying to answer this converse, so as I said, this red diagram is, is, is kind of a good illustration of what's going on. So you shouldn't expect it to be really perfect, but uh, white hat theorem kind of tells you how perfect it actually is. Um, so let's have an example. So I have three examples, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's start with the good. Um, uh, no, no attention, so the, the bad or the ugly are still very, very okay spaces. I just decided to go with the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, because that's very famous. Anyway, so here's my first example. So I have this space X, which is this nice convex set. Um, and it turns out that computing homology and homotopy is extremely easy for this set. Uh, so all homotopy groups are, are zero. And I just write for simplicity uh, pi star by meaning kind of a pi n for, for your favorite n, right? So kind of the collection of all of them. Uh, so it has trivial homotopy. The space clearly has trivial homotopy. Um, and this space X here, which is X and not W, is actually homotopy equivalent to a point. So here you have a perfect match between uh, pi, what, pi n's in this case, so pi stars vanishing and uh, the space being trivial. Um, turns out, and this kind of was the white hat, one, one of Whitehead's main examples, that's not always true. And here comes the bed. So the bed needs a little bit more time to explain. Um, it's topology sine curve as linked in the description, one of my favorite curves. So it's a sine one over X that you see here uh, is this little part of the graph. And how does the, this, so this is sine one over X and how does it sine one over X looks like? Well, it's sine as you, if you remember is this space and one over X now goes very, very quickly to infinity. So it kind of, it's like a sine curve, but you, you run more and more of those um, waves in a fewer amount of time. So what it does is exactly what, what, it's, what you see here. It kind of starts off very slow and then it just gets, just gets crazy 
towards zero. At zero, kind of it uh, oscillates infinitely often around zero. Okay, so this is a nice space, or it's actually not a nice space, it's a bit of a crazy space, uh, but it's not quite the one I want. So the, the, the W, uh, the quasi circle or Warshaw circle, depends a little bit uh, how you want to call it, is just, it's just the topologist sine curve, but you close it into a circle. And it's not really a circle now, that is why it's called the quasi circle, because you have this kind of, this funny bit of ever oscillating around this point. So it's not quite clear what this space are. And it turns out it's not so super easy to see that all of these homotopy groups actually vanish. So um, this is not a circle, right? A circle has non-trivial pi one, for example, but uh, this space really has vanishing homotopy groups. Uh, but it turns out that this is not a point. So here we have a kind of a flawed match between all homotopy groups vanish, but it's still not a trivial space. Um, it turns out this is one of the main examples to motivate the following. Um, Whitehead theorem in the homology version uh, downstairs and in the homotopy version upstairs. And the kind of the point will be that this one is not one of the nice spaces. So it's not a cell complex. Um, by the way, you can prove that by hand. You, you shouldn't use Whitehead theorem. You can use Whitehead theorem to show that this is not a cell complex, of course, because uh, as we will see, this is not supposed to happen for cell complexes, uh, but you can also prove it by hand anyway. Anyway, we have two kind of statements here for homotopy and for homology, and they kind of measure the failure of those invariants to be perfect invariants. And really what I need here as an input is, well, it should be connected, but who cares about connected? The real input here is that you want to have cell complexes. You have cell complexes X and Y, and you want to measure how different they are. I want to, I want to tell whether, whether X is a homotopy equivalent to Y or not. Okay, and the following are then equivalent given a map, and this is kind of crucial, we'll see it in the next example, in the ugly example. So given a map between X and Y, this is the homotopy equivalence. So this kind of this topology statement, if and only if something happens in algebra, I'm going to say in a second what, what's on algebra here, um, slightly strange, for homology, but pretty nice actually for homotopy. So if and only if the induced maps on homotopy are all isomorphisms, okay? So all homotopy groups are isomorphic and a little bit stronger, so beware here, a little bit stronger, um, this F induces all isomorphisms. This is not quite saying, this is, as I said, a bit stronger than saying um, the uh, homotopy groups are isomorphic because there should be one isomorphism inducing all of them, right, for all N. It's a stronger statement, so beware a little bit. We'll see the ugly in a second. Um, a kind of the same type of statement for uh, homotopy, uh, homology, sorry, uh, just a little bit more complicated because you need to take the pi ones into account and the pi ones kind of don't really see the, the universal cover and then you need to do the same for uh, homology in the universal covers. So homology is a slightly flawed statement, but it's the same type of statement. So something is in homotopy equivalence if and only if it induces an isomorphism in homotopy. And one of these directions is kind of the, the easy one. This is kind of, this is easy so it's, because this is our homotopy invariance. So if you have a homotopy equivalence, then it induces an isomorphism, but the converse is also true. And this is kind of the, this is, this is, this is crazy. It's kind of a crazy statement, kind of the main point of uh, Whitehead theorem. And this is almost, as I said, telling you that homotopy groups uh, and homology uh, in a slightly different fashion and homology uh, kind of detect your space as soon as you have a CW complex. So for non-CW complexes, you can't really do anything. That is crazy anyway, who cares? Um, but for, for cell complexes, you're pretty good. So um, calculating homotopy almost gets you there to determine its homotopy type, which is, I think, a pretty cool thing. So let me discuss the ugly a little bit, kind of this um, standard example here. So you can take a space, which is certainly a cell complex, so X in another space, which is also certainly a cell complex, so Y, and the difference is it's almost silly. So you have an S2, so this picture, and you cross it with an RP3. So you have two and three here, so it's a two, three space if you want. 
And this is my funny illustration of RP3. So RP3 is a sphere modulo, um, uh, modulo uh, the antipode map. And you can do the, 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 the opposite way. You can have a 3 2 space. So you have an S3 and an RP2. Uh, this is the attempt to draw an S3, which naturally lives in four space. Uh, not so easy to imagine. Um, but anyway, so this is a projected plane. And those spaces, they look very similar, right? In, in S2 cross RP3 or in S3 cross RP2. And it turns out that um, they have the same. They have the same pi family of groups. So uh, it looks like they should be homotopy equivalent. Of course, they're not. Just look at the spaces, right? One of them has a three of dimension two, the other one has a three of dimension three. One of them has a projective plane or projective space of dimension three, and the other one a projective plane. So, of course, they're not homotopy equivalent. Um, but kind of, they have the same homotopy groups. So, kind of, white hat theory wants to tell you that they are homotopy equivalent. It doesn't because you're missing the map between them. That would induce uh, the isomorphisms. So what will happen here is you have uh, plenty of pi's, whatever pi one, pi two, pi three, and so on for x and y, for x and y, for y is the same, pi one, pi two, pi three, and it might happen that you're just isomorphic, but kind of not in not connected way. So this is isomorphic to this one, this is isomorphic to this one, this is isomorphic to this one, and so on, but in a non-connected way. Really, Whitehead theorem says. There is one map inducing all isomorphisms, which is a different statement than they're all isomorphic. And here you have a counterexample. Actually, it turns out um, that these guys have different. So you can check this, for example, by, by computing homology, because homology actually is, is different. And what fails, as I said, let me stress it again, you're missing this map that induces all isomorphisms. So the ugly is actually a pretty beautiful example. Sorry, little example that I called you ugly. Uh, Pretty beautiful example. It's telling you you have to be careful. It's not quite that Whitehead theorem tells you that spaces are homotopy equivalent if and only if their homotopy groups are isomorphic. No, they kind of have to uh, be isomorphic in a coherent way, right? So they have to be isomorphic in a nice coherent way. Anyway, so it's it's a pretty good motivation to first study cell complexes, second study hom homotopy and homology because actually those are pretty strong invariants. That's what the statement is says in the end. Um, so I actually like it a lot. Um, I also hope you like the statement and I also hope you like the video and I hope to see you next time.